Hello again. Today on the bench we have this CBS era FibroChamp. Customer brought it in complaining of uh, some unnatural distortion issues. It's some cutting in and out. So we're going to crack this little fella open and see what we've got going on. It's also going to give me a chance to explain something that I've wanted to about a champism for quite some time. So hang tight. Here we go. Well, we are in. I've started a little bit of uh, preliminary checking here. And this amp is pretty much untouched. I did replace the power cord quite some time ago for the previous owner. At that time he was warned about some cap issues and some other stuff, but I see it's moved on. So, here we are. Uh, we've had a little problem here. If you look right here, you can see the capacitor is actually exploded out the back here. This is actually the capacitor across the cathode bias resistor for the 6V6. I've also checked our resistors here. Um, the 1K, all these have drifted. The 1K is not too bad. It's only drifted up to uh, 1150. The 10K has drifted up to 11,500. The 470 ohm bias resistor has also drifted up to where it's close to 600 ohms now instead of 470. We also found I had a quite microphonic and rattly 6V6. And something else I found I want to point out that's very important on Champs and any other amplifier it uses an RCA plug for the speaker connections. Make sure these are tight. This one is okay. You can see there's no cracks. A lot of times they'll crack through this line right here. It needs to be just cleaned up and uh, tightened up a little bit and it'll be okay. The old plugs like this are much better made than the new ones, so if you have one that you can straighten out, go for it. Um, it'll be a whole bit more substantial. We've also done some testing down here to find out what we've got going on. Uh, this, again, like I say, is one of the CBS era amplifiers, and everybody knows that CBS had some really good ideas. Uh, on this particular amp, they had bumped the power supply voltage up and had gone from roughly uh, 350 to 420 volts and went from, as I said, 4 watts to 6. But we've got a few issues there. So, our voltages on this amp, as it was running with the original tube in it, it's 400 volts on the plate, 400 volts on the screen, and drawing about 45 mils. There's also 24 volts on the cathode resistor for your bias. So we're going to take a few corrective measures here. Uh, I've actually already tried a new tube in it. At the new tube, our plate voltage dropped to 397, where our screen stayed at 400. Uh, I want to go ahead and change a couple of things here and get a few things squared away. Uh, I'm going to be changing all these resistors, this capacitor. I'm going to change the other two electrolytics in the preamp section here to start with, just because they've got issues. It would not hurt to change the power supply capacitor, but we're going to check it out. We don't seem to have any hum or anything right now, so we're going to see what we can do with it. So when I come back, we're going to talk about some other issues here. 
I've got a few things set up here for a demonstration for you. Right now, as it sits, new tube, new capacitor for the cathode bypass, and a 470 ohm resistor clipped in for the bias resistor, we are getting roughly about 50 mils plate current on the 6B6. And if you measure the cathode current, you've got about 55. Now I've added a 1 ohm resistor up here so we can measure off of it. Now that's going to give us screen current and plate current at the same time because when I start running signal through the amp I will not be able to measure at the tube like I do a lot of times. So right now we're assuming we've got about 5 milliamps current on the screen and about 50 on the plate. Now here's another thing. We hear a lot about champs running too hot. In most cases that's true. This one's actually running a bit so hot. So what most well-intentioned technicians would do here is add a larger cathode resistor to cool the bias down for the tube. And that is the wrong thing to do. A large resistor is too bouncy, it changes too much. You have to go to a very large value, pretty much double the 470 ohm resistor to get it to do anything. And then there's going to be negative effects to that too. Now, I want you to know I went down the same path years ago myself thinking I was doing the right thing until a much higher authority pointed out to me the errors of my ways. So I'm going to show you what I come up with later. But first we're going to run through some numbers here. Okay? Like I said, it's going to get deep. I've clipped in a 1K resistor. And that has got our bias current. Static. At 29 mils. Okay? Most guys say they want to see 30. Alright? look at a few more things. Plate voltage has now gone to 417, 418. Our screen voltage has also gone up. Our bias voltage has gone up from 24 volts to 32. Now again, if you're running a 25 volt capacitor here, we'd have another problem too going on. Now, Oh, we're not done yet. We're going to apply some signal. Alright. We're on four on the amplifier. Our screen current and plate current is now 33. Drop it back down to double check. Okay. 32.6. Alright. A bias voltage has gone to 34 volts. Okay. Now we're going to crank this puppy up, because, yeah, who plays clean? <laughs> Alright, so we're getting a little distortion here. We're going to come back over here. Our bias voltage is now 
40.9. Our current here is now 40. Let's go up some more. Flat out. Got 50.5. Okay. Our bias voltage has gone to 50 volts. Now we don't want our bias voltage to fluctuate. And keep in mind, when we're reading this 50.4 here, we're also reading a screen current. All right. Now the big thing is, we don't want that fluctuation. We want this to stay pretty much close. We've got 50 mils there, and with no signal, we have roughly 33. Again, that's still counting the screen. So our actual plate current with no signal applied is 29. So we're getting close to double our current, and guys, Class A doesn't run that way, okay? Now let me show you where the real problem is and what I do. So here is the first part of our explanation of the problem. What the real problem here is, is the screen current. If we look over here, we actually have about three mils of screen current at this point. That's all idle. Now that gets us right into the same position that we were talking about earlier, where we have 53 mils here, roughly 54 mils of current at idle with a 470 ohm resistor, and about 3 4 mils of screen current. Okay, now, so what happens when we apply a signal? Okay, no signal, we're applying the signal. Again, we're about Oh, number four on the volume. That's staying about the same. However, this is our screen current. Okay, now as we bring the amp up, our screen current's going up. Our screen current's going way up. We only need to be seeing about five mils here. And we're getting close to 30. This is all the reasons why the tubes arc and stuff in the champs. All right, like I say, at idle, we've got about three, flat out, almost 30. We should only be seeing about five here, okay? If we go back over here to this, now we're drawing about 55, okay? So, time for corrective measures. From this point on, all of our voltages will be taken from the top of the cathode as a reference for the output tube. So here we go. At this point, the plate has 382 volts on it. The screen now has 303. 
right? Output tube current standing. Get some glare off here. There we go. 36 mils. Now the numbers tell us we should have about 32 mils there. I'm going to call that done because four mils with a brand new tube is no big deal. And we do not want it to drop out of class A when we hit it with power. Now, what did we do to solve all this? Well, what we did, <laughs> we changed two resistors. Not only did we not even change them value wise, they're the same value resistors, they're just swapped positions. In the silver face, black face amplifiers, well, this resistor was a 1K. This resistor is a 10K. In the tweed amps, these were reversed. Actually, in the tweed amps, we had a 10K here and a 22K here. So, tip guys, if you want to uh, darken up your black face or silver face fender a little bit to sound more like a tweed tone or black face amp, go to a 22K up here. All right, here's a freebie for you. But anyway, what we've got now is an amplifier that's much, much, much more, more stable. Uh, we're not going to be running into a lot of stupid stuff here. Now, we mentioned that the screen voltage was much lower. Um, let's get this clip back over here. The screen voltage is actually 303 volts. Okay, now doing the math on that, that tells you that we ought to come up with about, oh, roughly, again, about 7 mils. Now we're peeking out here when we're cranking this thing at 12, but we're not exceeding the voltage for the tube like it was before. And you notice that the screen voltage is actually lower than the plate voltage, which it should be. So we've got a much more stable amplifier. Checking something else here. Let's uh, grab a different lead. This is hard to do with just two hands. So our bias voltage at this point is 20 volts. Okay. Let's crank this thing up. Flat out, our bias voltage is 19 volts. So it's not fluctuating anything like it was either at that 1K resistor. So my point here is, guys, we see a lot of videos, a lot of guys talking about changing this to a big resistor here. Don't do it. Uh, swap these two resistors. Solve a lot of problems, a little bit of trouble. As I've been doing the same trick for over 20 years now with Champs. Something I came upon. And all you gotta do is think a little bit. Class A should not vary that much in current. You certainly don't want your bias bouncing all over the place. So, there. Two resistors done. So I'm going to finish this amp up. I'm going to change a couple more capacitors here, clean a couple pots and a few things. But I'm going to get on with it and get this amplifier done and get it off the bench. You know, this is a working shop. <laughs> so, um, till next time, play nice. Hope this all helps you out a little bit. I'll see you later.